What's up? It's Dave from Somerville Media Center. This is Some Arts, the monthly arts calendar listing show produced by the Somerville Media Center. Let's get right to the listings. Loika and Mestizados, contemporary songs with South American roots hosted by Journeys and Sound, takes place Friday, April 6th from 8 to 10 p.m. at the Arts in the Armory Cafe. Loika, Angela Valenzuela, is a Chilean singer-songwriter, and her latest album, A la Sombre de su Arbol, is inspired by the effects of climate change, political violence, and personal experiences. Mestizados is a new project formed by five Colombian musicians. The group previously performed in the Journeys in Sound series, so it is exciting to have them back. Tickets are $15 and are available at Eventbrite. Um, did somebody say puppets? Um, well, by mere coincidence, you can bring the kids to Somerville Media Center as the Boston Area Guild of Puppetry and the Somerville Media Center celebrate the World's Day of Puppetry with an evening of short puppetry-related films for the whole family. Friday, April 6th from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Beginning at 7 p.m., singing sheep, piano mouth puppets, and an updated Old Mother Hubbard fill the screen in Handmade Puppet Dreams for Families, Volume 1 an episode of Traveling Film Series created by puppet artist Heather Henson. At 8 p.m., see Puppet Showplace resident artist Sarah Nolan's Treeples, in which girls join forces with lively forest creatures to rid the woods of monsters, followed by Brooklyn puppeteer Spencer Lott's chocolate drama, Cupcake, and other independent short films. All are invited to a public reception for Puppet Film Night at 6.30, here at Somerville Media Center, RSVP at somervillemedia.org backslash events. I had a chance to speak with Nina Eichner and Greg Cook about a pair of events happening the weekend of April 21st and 22nd. Here's what they had to say. With me now is Nina Eichner from the Somerville Arts Council. Hi. Hey, and Greg Cook. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm honored to be here. Welcome to spring in Somerville. It's spring. Can't you tell? It's no spring. <laughs> uh, it's so good to be back. Yeah, welcome back. Thanks it's for been having a while. me. Um, so there's a couple of events uh, the weekend of the of April 21st and April 22nd. Um, Greg, you're the producer for one of the events. We'll yeah. we'll get into that in a moment. But, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you picked Sunday. <laughs> you picked you Sunday. Sunday follows Saturdays. And Saturday, <laughs> April 21st, is the spring cleanup event yeah. citywide. Um, why don't you tell us a little more about that, Nina? Sure. So this event is a collaboration between the mayor um, and the city of Somerville um, and Groundwork Somerville who's a great nonprofit in Somerville. And we also have sponsorship from Comcast um, for this Earth Day spring cleanup. So we have um, a dozen sites all over the city and all throughout the different wards. And people can go and do beautification projects in their neighborhood, um, get the city ready for the springtime. And then we have a barbecue after that celebrates you know, spring, people come together, there's a bunch of local nonprofits that will be tabling and doing activities at that event. There'll be a clothing swap, as well as um, some different kind of environmental activities and ways people can learn about climate change and things like that. So if somebody comes to one of the um, locations, mm -hmm. of which uh, Somerville Media Center is one of them for War II, yep. Um, what, can, what can they expect to be doing? Yeah, so it really depends. Some of the venues are more urban, you're going to be doing some trash pickup, some of them you're going to be doing more weeding. Actually, Quincy Street Park, which is the location of Sunday's event, which we'll talk about in a minute, is also one of the Ward 2 locations. And um, at that location, people will be doing more actual gardening and weeding um, to get the, the um, garden ready for this event. Um, some, one of the paths is by the high school, you'll be kind of cleaning up the running path by the high school. So it's really a variety of things um, depending on the neighborhood and there'll be captains, both aldermen and school committee captains as well as Groundwork Somerville volunteers mm -hmm. who will be leading the cleanup. So if you go to the site there'll be supplies and tools and someone to instruct you on how to help out. Cool. Yeah. And 
probably most importantly, are people going to get those nifty hats that were available last year? It's a great question. Um, there are not new hats this year, sadly. But we do have some extra left. So first come, first serve. If All you right. get there early, you can get a hat. Um, there'll be a breakfast at 9 a.m. at the Blessing of the Bay Boathouse, sponsored by Comcast. Then people will go out to the sites from 10 to 12 to clean up. And then the barbecue and activities will be back at the um, Blessing of the Bay Boathouse from 12 to 2. Sounds great. Yeah. So get out there, um, get a hat, clean up your neighborhood, meet some people in the community, and then go back for some barbecue. Yeah. Right. It's a good day. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah. And so as part of that weekend, is a, a new event mm -hmm. um, that Greg Cook is helping to produce yes. with the Somerville Arts Council. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, tell us about this mystery event. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Starting Over Festival, and it's about spring, and spring is a moment of kind of renewal. And um, we're holding it at the Quincy Street Open Space, which is this incredible tiny um, uh, park, garden park. and. Um, Originally, it was a, uh, a house was there, and it burned, and so the city turned it into this beautiful little garden-like park with a boardwalk wow. and seats and stuff. And we've timed it so it's supposed to arrive right when the tulips and daffodils are blooming. So it's this beautiful moment in the park, and then we're gonna have um, uh, mask making and art and uh, little nature tours talking about. Um, uh, wildlife and plants you can see in the city um, and then uh, we have some tree planting yeah, yeah. Um, this is a partnership between <coughs> Greg Cook the Sumber Arts Council as well as a few of the departments in the city so the Office of Environment and Sustainability as well as um, our own arborist so Somerville has an arborist position on staff who looks out for the trees in the city um, Vanessa Bukili and she'll be there planting a new tree so people can come and help do the tree planting at the event. Yeah. We'll also be giving out little seedlings for people to take home. And as Greg mentioned, some art activities, um, yeah. some poetry, and um, also, as I mentioned, for Saturday's event, there'll also be a clothing swap and clothing donation program. We have a new partner with the city who's doing uh, pickups of clothing and household goods. Um, so that will be available so people can bring clothing for a clothing swap or if you just have stuff you want to get rid of, recycle, they'll take it and um, make good recycling use of it. Right, so people are doing their own spring cleaning and they can bring their, their wardrobes. Exactly, this is the time. Right. Uh, bring your clothing, maybe you'll take home something cool that someone else brought or maybe you'll just have a way to get mm. rid of the stuff and it goes, um, you know, it doesn't get put in a landfill, it's going to get recycled. Sounds great. Yeah. So um, now, Greg, you brought some uh, some props here. I brought some masks. Yeah. So are these the kind of, uh, is this the kind of mask making that's going to be available at the yeah, event? Yeah, we're hoping people can make masks. Yeah. <laughs> these are great. Wow. How do you uh, wear these? You uh, put your hand in it so it opens up Oh, it nicely. doesn't go on your head. It goes on your head, yeah. Oh, oh. That was just the, the preparation the step. That's the preparation, yeah. This one is, is a... Uh, a chickadee. Chickadee. And this is a uh, goldfinch. I thought here. chickadees were red. Uh, no, this one is a chickadee, I believe. Okay. And uh, then you put it on your head like this. Oh, great! Wow. Like, this is gonna be great. Ah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's amazing. That nice. We look They're great. Very easy. You, you get a better shot. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pull back. I yeah. Need to oh, get the whole look thing at that. We look, look incredible. You look just like birds now. So that's people will get to make these at the festival, Greg? Yeah, yeah, they're very like, wonderful so and simple to make. They're great for kids to make. And then we're looking for like to have a, you know, we, all these bird people wandering around the beautiful blooming yeah. garden. It's like, it's bird really parade in the mini park. Yeah, great. Like that. That, that looks amazing. This is exciting. <laughs> Would you like to try one? Dave, I think you need one. Would <laughs> no, you like no, no, no. chickadee I, I or goldfinch? Really, I think maybe so. you should try this one because this one matches my outfit. Though. All right. <laughs> Yeah, why not? And um, Dave, this year's Starting Over Festival is the sequel to the Tiny Great Outdoors Festival yeah. that Greg produced with us last year. Right. Which was in the same park, but a different theme and slightly different programming. So we're really enjoying having these kind of celebration <coughs> of Earth Day and Arbor Day in this little park. And for Somerville, yeah. which is such an urban environment, to have these little pockets of green oasis urban wilds, as Greg likes to call it, is yeah. a really unique thing. Yeah. So it's really nice to get to kind of celebrate this park. And we had this great crowd last year um, kind of get to wander through the park. And a lot of people who didn't know it was there get to discover it. So hopefully so the same thing will happen this year. Spaces in yeah, Somerville. exactly. 
That looks great on you. <laughs> you look great. Yeah, you do. My I two bird friends. You really should come to the festival, you know, make your own mask. You should sure. you know, wear it all around town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel really You can take great. it off now if, it, if it's feeling a little bit hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually warming me up. I think, that's good. I think it looks really on. good. So this is the chickadee? Yeah, yeah. That's the, no, that's, that's the goldfinch. Gold the goldfinch gold 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 is yellow. Okay, and yeah. that's the chickadee. That's the bird the chickadee. Uh, all right. The and the chickadee is the mass Isn't that the mass bird, bird, right? <clears throat> yeah, what, what a wonderful coincidence. Wow. That was totally an accident, right? Totally an accident. Cool. Wow. Well, I don't know how else to end this segment. This is this has been amazing. I think this. I think that these um, appropriately kick off our event season. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And even if like the the out the outdoors like whenever you watch this, whenever this airs, isn't all that spring like? It will be. It will be soon. next we, we month. Got, we got birds coming. We got cleanup happening. So it has to be. Yeah. It's very soon. It's and if we have soon. to shovel snow to prep for this weekend, we will. All right. Yeah. That sounds good. So <laughs> <laughs> see you there. All right. Uh, thank you, Greg <laughs> Cook. Thank, thank you, you as always, us. Nina. Thanks, Eichner. Dave. Um, yeah. Get out to these events. Wednesday, April 12th, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Tufts University Art Galleries in Medford, the artist Salvador Jimenez Flores hosts Tortilla Social, which is an ongoing participatory project that transforms public spaces through the use of printmaking as a tool for self-expression, advocacy, and art education, and food as a unifying element for community. Join Jimenez Flores as he utilizes the Tufts University Art Galleries to explore artistic and gastronomic creativity. More information is available at the Tufts University Art Galleries website. A Queer Kitchen Pop-Up, appropriately titled Queer Kitchen Pop-Up, is at 1 Somerville, Monday, April 16th. Doors are at 6 p.m. and proceeds benefit the LGBTQ youth organization, Bagley. Here's how it works. $20 gets you one item each from Tex-Mex Eats, 789, and Tanam. $60 gets you the same plus a take-home bag. Part of the proceeds will benefit Bagley. Free admission for those not wanting to eat, but who still want to support Queer Kitchen, Bagley, enjoy the music, and dance. Food is from 6 to 9, music till 10 p.m., and more information can be found at oncesomerville.com. You know, Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, we love our zines. We just do. And case in point, New Zine Land returns to the Cambridge Elks Lodge at 55 Bishop Allen Drive, Saturday, April 21st, and Sunday, April 22nd. So head to the heart of Central Square and explore two floors of 60 artists, writers, and small presses slinging their self-published works from comics to fanzines, artwork to autobiography, and everything in between. And it's free! Make sure, <laughs> make your own zine and check out some of the free workshops and skill shares offered throughout the day. More information is at newzineland.com. Gilmore Tamney is a Somerville artist who draws ambidextrous abstract drawings, writes proverbs, melodramas, novels, poetry, and narrative nonfiction, word miasmas, and plays guitar and sings in a rock band, among other things. Here's Gilmore in her own words. With me in the studio now is Gilmore Tamney, who is a Somerville artist, writer, musician, flanerer, <laughs> person about town who uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing for many years. Um, how did how do we meet? Uh, uh, through zines. Through zines. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing now? Like, what 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 are you focusing on mm. right now? Okay. Well, I have to talk about it in the third person, so Please. prepare yourself. All right. Uh, there is something afoot in Somerville, and it is called The Mystery. It is a person, most likely a person, uh, a, with a guitar and some loop pedals and some extremely cheap theatrics that is playing around in... Uh, with visions of eternity. So cool. That's that's exciting. And How long have you all been together as with the weapon? Like four or five years now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. On and a cap. Now, do you find like writing lyrics? And you write poetry as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. So is there is there something to writing lyrics that that's different about 
than so, writing. Well, it's different than writing poetry. It's it's motor coordination, probably. I mean, in part, is that I'm an ambitious guitarist, so I'm always trying to see what else I can do, but then getting your mouth and words uh, all wired up. It's like, I guess it must be like what it's to be a uh, pianist when you've got both hands that need to be doing all right, kinds of different things right. at the same time. So. And your brain processing and your reading. Yeah, yeah I don't understand fine. that. It's, it's like a dare. It's sort of like, um, and also I tend to write a lot of words. So I am trying to think more haiku than sonnet, not that I, I, that sounds very elevated sonnet, but um, just like trying to kind of dial it back, but with no success, mm. really, mm. <laughs> <laughs> whatsoever. Oh, so, yeah, it takes me a while. And uh, so, what other things are you writing? Um, well, it's looking like I might have a, a little the what they used to call a slim volume mm. of haiku coming out maybe in the fall. Very cool. <laughs> the, the fingers, <laughs> I don't know what that means. I guess it's mm. avarice, publishing mm. avarice. Um, so that's exciting. But uh, my writing raison d'etre of late is um, live at the Gilmore. Live at the Gilmore. Live at the Gilmore. <laughs> Um, yeah, so just you know, writing snack reviews and uh, some travel travel logs. Snack reviews. Snack reviews. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, What's the worst snack that you have uh, reviewed? The Thai uh, snack sticks that were, um, but it's a little unfair because they were based in sweet potato. No. Um, so and I hate sweet potatoes. So there was I'm not no a fan. Hope I'm not a fan of sweet potatoes, but. They were very strange, and <laughs> while I like some desiccated texture and taste, they're they're just really. I mean, I found them unpleasant, no. and you know, I'm pretty. Um, so that was not that was not so pleasant. But I've also like I reviewed the Clinton. I'm not sure quite now. <laughs> I have to admit, I don't totally know how to pronounce this. Uh, Chile. Shield? Oh, Egon Shiel. Yes, Egon Shiel. I've always pronounced it Shiel, but too. I'm sure like some academic, because yeah, I, I heard of Van Gogh and it's Van Gogh. Gogh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know, I, I'm you, probably wrong about Egon Shiel. But don't you feel like that's one of those things, that maybe it's being a little bit from the Midwest, I can't tell if it sounds pretentious to say Van Gogh, because you sound It's pretentious. Just, oh, it's <laughs> terribly pretentious. I'm going to say Van Gogh <laughs> forever. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, I thought it was Shiel. Chile, I've heard other people say, and then Chile, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I reviewed that show, and it was so much fun. At the at the MFA. At the MFA, yeah. right now till the 28th of May. So I just, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed. I mean, I... It's a good show. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ken and I, we saw it. Oh, um, yeah. We're members. We saw it before, uh, at the member yeah, preview. Yeah, show up. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought it was, it was great as a person who draws myself. Yeah. I think every art student is is clued into Egon Schiele oh, and sure. Gustav Klimt um, just because they, uh, I don't know, if you're, if you're used to drawing a certain way or if, you, if, you, if you're coming in with a lot of uh, preconceived notions about drawing, which young people, I don't want to speak for all young people, but I certainly did. Like, uh -huh. this is a drawing. This is not a drawing. Sure. Maybe it wasn't as rigid as that. But um, there's, there's just kind of this expressive, uh, quality to his to his drawing that's Egon really she, she, particularly she, 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 yeah. she, 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 Egon she, Scheele she, she, uh, <laughs> particularly with uh, with his work it really spoke to me as a you know a, a person in my late teens and early 20s when I was in art school um, at the, as to the possibility of expressiveness with drawing yeah 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 I can well uh, I was uh, struck by Klimt's um, I, I feel like one should be more of a fan of Chile just because it's like more s sort of more interesting and more complicated and tragic yeah yeah but Klimt the some of his drawings the proportions on it are so perfect with the head and the feet and the hand you know sorry hands and the feet mm. and the legs and I think that's so hard to do I just I was sort of like uh, mesmerized by that but um, Yes, it was a great show. Yeah, you know, good show. Yeah, it's nice to see drawings get some airtime. I mean, I'm a painting junkie, but I did really enjoy seeing things. At what, and some of them were pre-paintings, I guess, mm -hmm. as much as drawings. Yeah, a lot of drawings are um, put into a framework of 
like preparatory drawings or, or, or um, sketches leading up to like a sculpture or, so, or some other work of art. Um, and so, yeah, to see drawings just on their own in a show is always really interesting. Yeah, that uh, color of the wall, too. I'm just, I'm really struck by museums' ability to find these colors that mm. are so, like, non just like quiet or nondescript or like they're ev like uh, it's like a wall turning like averting its eyes from you or something i can, I think you could write a whole essay <laughs> it's funny colors, you know? it's funny like the different rooms in the mfa uh, uh, like i don't know we go probably once every couple of months or once every three months and i could sometimes imagine like okay the walls are really dictating this experience. So yeah. what would it be like if the walls were this color or not a color at all? My proposal for this for this Live at the Gilmore on Boston Hassel um, was to have an Old Master show in a 7-Eleven, which I think, like, just as a context, would be fascinating. Yeah. You know? Like a Turner over the Slurpee machine or whatever, <laughs> right? I mean... Like, it's ludicrous. And Lit with fluorescent lighting. <laughs> yeah. I have been really enjoying doing non-representational, I don't even, you know, I don't know what you call it, no, besides non-representational. It's, it's marker. Abstract. Abstract. Non-objective, non-representation. Non I like that. Yeah. Huh. Is that the same thing as non-aspirational, would you say? I don't, I, well, like, I heard the term non-objective um, in some of the foundational courses in art, and it was just like, Oh, this is just doodling. Uh -huh. um, like you're not trying to have an end game. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So that term kind of stuck with me. I'm not really sure how official my professor was using it. No, so I do the drawings and then I take a photograph and then I, it's like my video game to like get to, uh, with just ye old app on ye old phone, uh, you can just like twiddle and you know, and you know, I have a, I'm kind of a composition. I love looking at composition, so you get to like try different ways and um, asymmetry and symmetry and mm. all that stuff. So, but I am, I think I may be kind of needing to take a break from it. Um, right now, I have a whole bunch of leftover makeup I don't wear, so I've been using that to make drawing paintings. I don't know, drawntings. Um, I am, I, I do have an internet appearance. Uh, I am, see, I, I forget these sometimes. I'm on the Twitter at Gildedy Tableau, another one of my French affectations, like uh, the Flannery thing. Um, and Gildedy on Instagram, and there's lots of pictures and bands I go see. Um, I follow you on that. Yeah. yeah, you used to be more like uh, these sort of free jazz, sugary snacks I would make, but I've Sort of had to You've shifted gears. Yeah, shifted gears. Um, and then on the Facebook, there is a p page for Weather Weapon and um, uh, for the mystery, which I don't know anything about, but it is there. Um, so I think that's it for, yeah, I think that's my internet All right. presence. Gilmore Tamney. Yeah. Seek, seek her out in her. What do they say? Many endeavors. Uh, Scarlet Pim Pimpernel, Seeker there, Seeker. I mentioned the Scarlet Seek Pimpernel as <laughs> friends, and they were all like, they all knew this. Uh, I, I know. Pimpernel. I'm uncultured. <laughs> no, that's not. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank I you. Just plug two oh, things really yeah. quickly. Oh, okay. yeah. Plug. All right. All right. Uh, 4 8, that is April 8th, there is a show at the Armory Cafe in Somerville. God bless the Armory Cafe for their awesome uh, ability to host shows. It's called Sunday Afternoon Rager of Poetry and Song. It's some poets and some musicians reading and performing. And then on uh, May 3rd, there is a Girls Rock Camp benefit at the Armory Cafe. And it's all comedy, comedy, comedy. And who doesn't love comedy? Because I have, like, with some help, but found some great comics. So I hope you will come down and support a fine uh, Boston institution for good. Using their powers for good. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Gilmore. Should we shake? Sure, yeah, yeah let's shake. Like Very okay. official <laughs> stamp of approval. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yay. Should we say? Ah. 
Fun fact, Somerville Media Center hosts media mixers periodically for those who are interested in TV or radio production to mingle and or network with media makers and creatives. The April Media Mixer will take place Sunday, April 24th from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Armor Cafe and as a bonus, it's in collaboration with our friends at Women in Film and Video New England. Even if you're mildly curious about video making, editing, videography, podcasting, or radio, come out, mingle, meet some people. More info is at somervillemedia.com backslash events. Somerville Open Studios takes place throughout Somerville, Friday, May 4th to Sunday, May 6th. Check out what 350 plus artists that live and work in Somerville have been working on. Artists will open their studios and welcome in the public from 6 to 9 p.m. on Friday night and from 12 to 6 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. A free trolley will loop the city uh, with information about our fair city and all the studios and the many happenings for the weekend of Somerville Open Studios 2018. You can visit somervilleopenstudios.org for more information. And quick aside, support artists. It, it's such a great thing to do. You know that, that poster on your wall that you got from some chain store? It's not so original. You know what's going to impress your friends and loved ones? A piece of original art. It's a part of you. It's, it's supporting artists who need support, who depend on it. Get out there, see some art, support artists. That does it for Some Arts for this month. If you have an event that you're producing that you'd like to see featured on this show, send an email this way. We'll also feature it on the SCAT TV Digital Community Bulletin Board. For SCAT TV, Somerville Media Center, and Some Arts, I'm Dave. Get out there, enjoy the spring weather, and see some art. Thank mm -hmm. you.